Hey, what is up ladies and gentlemen, I'm Mario here once again, and I'm Blossom here, we are back for some more of the Maxi Toys videos, and hello everyone. And today ladies and gentlemen, we'll present to you the extra video of Sonic Generations for the Xbox 360 slash PlayStation 3 and PC version, to actually see how there's any other contents of how this game offers. Now, technically we've already done like, um, 9 different challenge acts, but once you actually complete 10 different, um, um, challenge acts in each of the, um, the acts, like acts 1s and 2s, like, um, there are, essentially has like, uh, I believe there are a grand total of only 10 of those, um, specific challenges in order to actually just, uh, you know, in this pro zone. Like, if you complete the first, uh, 5 acts, then it will actually restore the 50% of their, uh, landmark, but then if you're trying to complete the other 5, which is essentially Modern Sonic, for, for example, then we can able to actually clarify, we can actually fully restore the entire environment. So even then though, that might be really um, a huge um, guilty pleasure, especially noticeable that how the fact that if you want to actually complete the entire game, you must be sure you need to actually complete all the challenge acts, so even then though, there's not much else we can say about it. Of course, S-Ranks doesn't matter, because even then though, that S-Ranks does not count at all in the, um, during the, um, you know, the trophies and uh, trophies and stuff like that, or achievements and stuff like that, whatever. Um, thankfully though, you don't have to necessarily try to get the S-Ranks on that department, unless you'd be very, very curious to actually do it. But even then, though, for my cup of tea, it's not my kind of thing. Second thing you might actually notice that right off the bat though is that we already mentioned this before about in the beginning part of this last play is the fact that there's actually the extra video of how this game offers an LC form of um, Casino Night Zone which could be only purchased if you ever collected yourself a collection of um Oh sorry for a little bit of a tongue twisting right there, I do apologize but, um, apparently you can actually, um, you can only get, um, Casino Night level within a collector's edition of Sonic Generations only. Because, um, it's a bit of a shame though, until when it gets to the PC version that you can actually download it there. But, um, it's still a pre-order bonus for the console versions, like the 360 and PS3 and all that. But still, unfortunately, we haven't got a chance to unlock it though, but even then though, it's probably too late for now. Because, uh, as far as I've heard, that it might be getting pretty expensive for now on, for the collector's edition I've heard. Now, as you can see right there, there's a giant red star ring displayed on top of the Green Hill Zone. What that means is that you actually collect all five of those red star rings, and then every time you grab the red star rings, you actually unlock these different sort of items. Like, for instance, the new artwork, new background music, and if you actually grab all five of them in pro level, then you get yourselves a new skill. So even though that will be very, very, very extra cheating about it. And while you're at it, you can actually buy yourself some uh, nifty amount of items thanks to the skill shop, because that's what the skill shop comes into play. If you want to actually get yourself some new abilities for either Classic and Modern Sonic, then you probably should be able to actually use those points until you actually spend them. So even then though, you can also purchase your extra lives if you continuously die on that. And there's also this special item which is called Sega Mega Drive Controller. Which I believe it only cost about like 7,777 uh, points. If you do manage to purchase that um, controller with those amount of points, you actually unlock yourself something a little bit unique. It's the fact that as you can see, there's actually a Mega Drive display onto the Green Hill Zone uh, little uh, platform over there. What that does is that if you grab yourselves the Sega Mega Drive controller slash Sega Genesis controller, you actually have the ability to play the old school Sonic game, Sonic the Hedgehog 1 from 1991. Yes, as you probably expected that it has been, uh, it, Sonic the Hedgehog as far as the game is concerned, it has been a whole of a lot more on compilations lately, mainly in, um, you can probably find this on um, the Sonic Maker Collection, and, and also the likes of Sonic's Ultimate Genesis Collection, or Sonic Jam, and, or in this case, Sega Mega Drive Ultimate Collection, and um, the PC, oh, no, yeah, the PC as well, and the PSP versions, and the Nintendo DS, that um, you can obviously try to get Sonic 1 to begin with, and it's on Xbox Live Arcade, it's on PlayStation Network, it's on the Wii's Virtual Console, and it's actually now bundled in with Sonic Generation, so, um, that's actually pretty insane amount of versions of Sonic 1 at the moment. But that's only because of Sonic the Hedgehog 1 is the most iconic video game character in the entire Sega universe. But even then though, that's pretty pleasant surprise. So yeah, you can actually play Sonic the Hedgehog 1 all over again, 
But the only major exception I must point things out though, this wasn't exactly the widescreen display, because all it does is just puts in 4.3 ratio, which, unlike who it does in the second Mega Drive Ultimate Collection, you can actually set it into widescreen or the normal screen. But even though, no, in this particular version of Sonic 1, that it's only stuck with um, 4.3 uh, ratio. Which I don't mind with, and also the visuals do look absolutely crisp on the, on the Xbox 360 version slash PlayStation 3. But if you guys who actually lived in power regions, most notably the European countries, um, don't play this within 50Hz mode because if you play this on 60Hz mode, it runs very, very perfectly. However though, if you ever set your Xbox 360 or PlayStation 3 if you will, if you set this on 50Hz um, mode, Oh my god, it lags so much. Like, the music lags, the frame rate is lagging, but all in all, it's not a pleasant surprise for the, um, the 50 hertz mode, I don't think. But yeah, uh, we're not going to play for the entire game again for Sonic 1, because I'm pretty sure Mickey Mouse, um, if all four I've heard, that he's already done this Let's Play before. Yeah, because thanks to the Sonic Mania will be on its way. In fact, we only got about a month to go until Sonic Mania was about to be released. So even though now, I'm still really hyping and also excited at the same time. Yeah, which is quite a pleasant surprise. So, um, yeah, if you know, so if you're very curious if you want to try this game out on the Sonic Generations bundle, um, be sure to actually get yourself 7,777 points. Jeez, there's a lot of sevens going on until you actually unlock yourselves this game here. So, um, I don't think there's any, any way we can actually play Sonic the Hedgehog 2 or Sonic 3 or Sonic CD on this. It's just basically just Sonic 1 because, you know, this game did came out in 1991 and, you know, since Sonic Generations was supposed to be the 20th anniversary of Sonic the Hedgehog, but even then, uh, until at this point this year, then we're getting ourselves Sonic Mania and also Sonic Forces, which are both are considerably to be the 25th anniversary of Sonic. So, um, yeah, that was it for Sonic the Hedgehog 1 play playable in Sonic Generations. So, um, that's a nice little extra if you've been very curious if you want to actually play this game again, or even buy the game again, but this time in the likes of the built-in with Sonic Generations. Next thing we'd like to showcase off, an LC form of the very unique move until you actually um, get yourselves um, all five of those uh, red star rings in the level from Act 1 in Planet Wisp. And if you do this, um, the ability you actually unlock for Classic Sonic most likely is the homie attack. So, yeah, not to be confused as whenever you actually trying to get yourselves a homie attack on the Nintendo 3DS counterpart. However, unlike the ones in the 3DS version of Sonic Generations for the homing attack for Classic Sonic, then the 3DS version, you, you, you essentially unlock that, uh, you unlock that technique uh, once you finish with um, the big arm boss battle in the Classic era. And then, but that way, Classic Sonic can actually perform a homing attack. But this game, you have to, or in this case, in this version in particular, slash PlayStation 3 and PC version, you have to be sure you need to collect all five of those red star rings until you actually unlock that ability for Classic Sonic. And then once you've done that, then this is how it usually works. It feels exactly, almost exactly feels similar to how it does in the 3DS counterpart, except the fact that, well, it's obviously on HD and what have you. But even then, though, you can actually perform a jump dash once you're actually able to actually reach into those edges and whatnot. And there's also for the likes of this little um, green cursor, which means is that you can actually get a chance to do a homie attack. So, I think the, in the end of the um, the ending cutscene of this particular game has to offer that I'm guessing that he's trying to more accurately trying to practice on that homie attack uh, move. But even then, though, that's all that we can really imagine about it. So, um, the level we're going to be demonstrating on, it was actually Sky Central, if you those who'd be very curious about something. So, um, even then, though, we don't really mind Sky Century because, oh man, I love this level so much. It was supposed to be noticeable in the original version as well. So, um, oh, how in the world did I get hit right there? But anyway, let's go ahead and continue forward. So, even though we could potentially go, trying to go for a speed running and all that. So, um, unfortunately, that's not the case. So, um, yeah, the amount of, um, points you can actually equip on the, um, the skill list that you might actually put in your way known for is the fact that you can only hold up to 100 points, and for this particular homing attack ability for Classic Sonic, the amount of points you're going to be using is actually forms of 100, which is quite a lot of points though, actually. But the more of the skills you collect, thanks to the, um, the Red Star Rings, uh, Mission Structure, and as well as the Skill Shop eventually, uh, you manage to actually get yourselves uh, these skill um, abilities based on the, how much points you're going to be using from. So, like, 
Um, I don't know how much points to be exact. We even end up, though, we might as well have to research on that. So, anyway, let's just go to that area over there. Even under that, we actually did in a better run, unlike it does in the previous attempts, because um, this is where. Um, I don't know what I think about it for the time. I really do apologize there, folks. Okay, so, yeah, that's about all I can say about the homing attack for classic Sonic Steve Fernando. That, um, it does sort of remind me like I was playing Sonic 3D Flicky Silent all over again, but except the fact that you actually get yourself a homing shield on that game. But in this game, not so much. You get yourself a homing attack, um, ability once you've unlocked all five of those red star rings. So, in Planet West Act 1. Next, we're going to be showing case off is the collection room where you can actually look up on four different categories, which are movies, arts, music, or characters. Uh, for movies, you can actually rewatch those specific cutscenes if you want to actually upload yourselves a full movie out of it. If you if you guys would be very curious to try that out, and there's also for the likes of um, the arts means that you actually get yourselves a concept art. To see how this game usually actually worked out to be. But even though no, the, the only way you can actually unlock those are uh, tons of artworks is by simply have to constantly collecting through those red star rings. However, though, we don't exactly got um unlocked all everything at the moment because there are some uh, red star rings that we actually totally missed out on from. But hopefully we can actually do it on um in our own time, maybe one day. Especially noticeable on the PlayStation 3 and this version as well. But even though no, that's all I can really mention about it. So um yeah, you can see there's little concept arts from the past entry, so as you can see there's a Psycho Egg, means the final boss in Sonic CD. And you can also listen up on music, which that's actually heavily borrowed from the previous Sonic titles. Means that you can actually listen to the old school um, Green Hill Zone music, as well as the other musics from Sonic the Hedgehog 1, until when it eventually gets to the end, until it gets to Sonic the Hedgehog 4 Episode 1. There's also some um, spin-offs here and there as well, for more accurately, Shadow the Hedgehog has a soundtrack on this. And also for the likes of um, the racing genre, and also just, well, just typical platforming. So, between Sonic Events 1 and Sonic Events 2 and 3 soundtrack, you know, the Neo Green Hill Zone and Leaf Forest, and um, Route 99, specifically the remakes version of those types of music, that will heavily come back until Sushi 2014 Olympic Winter Games for both Mario and Sonic, obviously. So, um, and what's interesting about the, um, that um, if you want to actually listen to the music from, although we'll discuss more on that later. And finally, the character profiles, which you can actually look up on the character models, especially noticeable that you can actually just read the description of the characters themselves. So, Specifically for Sonic and Tails and possibly Dr. Eggman, that um, you can actually switch between these different versions of either these two or these three characters, because um, obviously those three characters has been shown on its classic variations of these um, characters showed up on the cutscenes and what have you. Like, you know, classic Sonic, modern Sonic, classic Tails, and modern Tails, and even um, Dr. Robotnik, and even Dr. Eggman. So, as for the other friends, they don't have the classic counterparts, even and, uh, that uh, they all stay exactly the same. So, let's show the hedgehog over there. Who's the bat? I kind of feel messed up on the um, the E123 Omega on this particular plot. But even then, uh, we don't know exactly for sure if he's going to make a return until Sonic Forces. We even know, we'll have to wait and see. So, um, yeah, you can also use the uh, the left thumb stick or the right left analog stick until you actually rotate the characters or what have you, which you can see it from the back, but you can't actually see it from the, um, the top-down perspective or what have you. Strangely enough, though, Metal Sonic, he's the only, um, uh, Metal Sonic you can actually just to experience the classic variation, no modern uh, Metal Sonic or anything until Sonic Forces. Now we're gonna go back in here because if you hold down the select button or the back button, it depends on what version you'll be playing, or in this case the select button in general, honestly, that time um, you actually discover there's actually a well hidden room known as the statue room. Basically, what this room can do is that you can actually see that, that we actually got ourselves a ton of statues on the display. Every time when you actually input those codes into this password, then if you insert the passwords correctly, then you're able to actually unlock one of these statues. Even then, that, that um, apparently that the, um, the statues might actually, um, might be simple and rare to find. However, though, thanks to internet, that actually gives us a little bit of a cheap code or what have you, then you can actually use the internet anytime you want. So, you should probably look on GameFAQs or something like that, or some guides of how to actually get all these statues through the game. 
But even then, though, unfortunately, though, we haven't exactly got all of them at the moment. Because even then, though, that, yeah. So here's those lovely, gorgeous Chaos Emeralds over there. They look really detailed, especially in this game's case. Good imagine if this will be happening until uh, Hedgehog Engine 2 for, um, you know, Sonic Forces and what have you on the PlayStation 4 and Nintendo Switch. That would be pretty awesome, actually, though, Mo. I don't have to say this much. Whee! Okay, so we got back into the Green Hill Zone because... The final two parts I'll consist of is going to be focused on for this particular final parts of the entire extra video, or in this case, the extra stuff of how this game offers. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll present to you the Super Sonic modes. So first off, we'll showcase off the classic Sonic version. So even then though, now, just like any other Sonic games, if you collect 50 rings, and by the way, if you, those of you very curious, that um, this is the um, the skill you actually unlocked once you finish the entire main game. But if you do that, then you should be able to actually unlock yourself supersonic skill. And you're going to have to equip it first until you actually decide to use the supersonic mode. Just like how it does in the options menu from Sonic Colors. And then if you collect these 50 rings as you can see, uh, there's actually this little um, Chaos Emeralds icon, 7 Chaos Emeralds icon. And you can either press the white button on the Xbox 360 version or the, uh, the triangle button for the PlayStation 3 version. Until you actually transform into Super Sonic himself, so... Honestly, Super Sonic is kind of underwhelming compared to the other um, games in the series, like... Um, even then, though, we'll discuss more into that details onto it as soon as we get to the modern Sonic version from that as well, so... But, um... Yeah, as far as I'm aware, that's uh, much like the homing attack for Classic Sonic, that this will cost about 100 points to be equipped, so... Yeah, if you want to get yourselves another moveset, then too bad you have to deal with the, um... They have to come with the 100 points mark, so even then, that's all there is to say about it. So, um... Yeah, in regards to that, though, however, though, that, as I mentioned earlier, that Super Sonic itself is kind of underwhelming in this game, because Classic Super Sonic, however, though, is just the invincibility, um, invincibility version of, um, Classic Sonic with no added speed or jump height on there whatsoever. Oh, yeah. For the most part, though, you're going to be seeing this um, unique um, victory animation every time when you become super formation. So, yeah, that's pretty interesting to say the least. So, you get the drill. Ah, oh, my Xbox Live is disconnected. Anyways, now we move on to Act 2 of Green Hill Zone. We're going to be showing the exact same thing, but this time with Modern Sonic. So, even then, though, now let's see how Modern Sonic is going to be plays out to be. Well, for a super form, anyway. So, just like the classic Sonic version, um, you have to collect like 50 rings in order to actually just to transform to Super Sonic, so everything else is checking there. Now, if you can hear closely enough, that um, the music starts to change, which is usually called uh, Let It Speed Mended from Sonic and the Secret Rings. That's only because, much like how it does in the Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games series, but specifically in the Vancouver 2010, London 2012, Sochi 2014, and even Rio 2016 Olympic Games, um, basically you can actually change those different music, background music, every time when you actually reach into those different levels and what have you. So even then, you can actually boot up the Leonard Speed Mended and Green Hill Zone. Granted, it wasn't exactly a desert theme or anything like that. Well, it's all when it gets to the point until the mismatch between the, um, Fresh Grass Green Hill Zone to the Desert, um, Wastelands from Sonic Forces. But even then, though, they'll have to be fine out just being checked. So, um... Yeah, so as you can see, we got ourselves 50 rings on Modern Sonic now. So let's just see how this actually plays out to be, unlike how it does in the classic Sonic formation. See, but then now, let's see how this just goes. But first, let's just perform these tons of tricks. So yeah, it's much like before, press the white button or the triangle button, and you should be able to activate the Modern Sonic. So, well, in this case, the Modern Super Sonic, anyway. So... Yeah, much like classic Super Sonic, I found it's also kind of underwhelming for me, because unlike how it does in, you know, classic, uh, you know, the Super Sonic and Sonic Colors, that you can actually just manage to, um, uh, zip through, or in this case, boost through, uh, with infinite, um, amount of boost gauge, which I think is kind of cool. But in this game, though, however, though, it's sort of more likely a downhill version of, um, Sonic Colors to me, because even then, though, now, what makes it a little bit too annoying for this game, for Super Sonic though, and specifically the modern version though anyway, is that, um, obviously you're gonna be, um, every time you're actually trying to boost onto this specific, um, section, uh, most of the time you'll be flying through the air, which I don't mind with, but the downside out of all of though is the fact that you'll be wasting a lot of rings so fast, like 10 rings per second though. Which is kind of a, uh, makes me think that, uh, I think the boost is actually overpowered for Super Sonic though, I have to admit though. 
So anyways, let's see this little um, witty wicked um, animation for, in this case, a victory animation for uh, Super Modern Sonic. See, even then, everything else is all checked here. So that's all I can say about the extra stuff of how the Sonic Generations game has to actually has to offer. And that's pretty much it for the entire premise of the Sonic Generations Let's Play. So, um, hope you guys do actually enjoy this Let's Play. Even mine and Mario included did actually enjoy this game again. Well, I'm the only one who's going to be uh, the newcomer introducing this, the Maxi Toys at, still at this rate. But even though, no, I'm still even just trying to actually do this for the third three times in this Let's Play. But thankfully, though, the third and final version is definitely much more better than the other two because, you know, quality is even much more improvement. There's no technical hiccups or anything like that, besides the lacking frame rate a little bit. But overall, it's pretty flawless as a result. So, that's it, ladies and gentlemen. That's it for our Let's Play of Sonic Generations. So this is me, Blossom, and Mario here. And tune in the next time of the 3D Sonic Retrospective before the Sonic Force is about to come around. And Duffy's going to be doing Sonic the Hedgehog 2006. Oh boy. See you guys then. Bye.